If you have bad inventory management in DayZ, it can be the cause of your death in the future. Don't have the supplies you need to survive? Dead. Are your slots disproportionate, causing you to inefficiently switch between items? Dead. Carrying too much gear, cutting your stamina bar down to 33%? Dead. Fear not though, young freshie. Today, I will go over some loot and inventory management tips that will help you survive efficiently in the apocalypse. Find a playstyle that suits you. As you can imagine, there are dozens and dozens of different methods and styles in which you can play DayZ, all of which probably require different types of gear to achieve what you'd like to do. Personally, I like to run with a civilian-styled character who travels light and utilizes stealth mechanics and sneaking around to my advantage. Therefore, I loot accordingly for civilian clothing that keeps my visibility low, I craft a light courier bag, and I carry supplies like a minimalist which I'll get into more later. Either way, it's important to find a core style of play that you enjoy in order for you to know what to look for from the start of your adventure. Adapt looting to your playstyle. Once you find your new apocalyptic playstyle and get a few runs under your belt, you can begin to envision the types of gear that you might need before you start each adventure. For a solo ghillie experience, for example, you might want to loot for netting to craft a ghillie if you can't find one at a heli crash. Collect water bottles for improvised suppressors, and a jacket and pants that yields high inventory slots since you can't wear a bag, and also keeps you camo. Then for a milsim chad gamer, you might want to find something like a plate carrier, BDU clothes, and stall kelly crashes for an M4 and dual mag with a combat site. Or you can just be a humble fisherman, and go on the coast looting for fishing equipment. The point is, different styles will require different items. If you know your style, and know what you need to achieve comfortability in your gameplay, then you can spend time looting in targeted areas, looting in areas that you know what you need will spawn in, therefore saving you from looting every single building in your spawn town. If you've watched any of my loot route walkthroughs, you know that I always say that the more time you spend in a spawn town, the more likely you are to die and have to restart. So, getting an idea of how you'd like to play can help you adapt your looting accordingly. Planning ahead. A lot of DayZ players make the mistake of playing and surviving at the moment, and in that moment only. Very few think about their long-term survival and look for gear that can save them in the future. You can't think things like, oh, I'm white food and water, I'll be good for now. Or, my blood is full, I'm chillin' homie. No. Remember, DayZ is highly fluid in its gameplay, meaning that things can be severely unpredictable. You can't rely on staving off hunger from town to town. What if someone hoards and eats all the food in the town you were counting on to find a can of spaghetti? Or if it gets bombed and you can't loot it at all? What if you get attacked by a pack of wolves and don't have a saline or a blood bag to get you out of flashing red blood in the middle of the forest? What if you get overrun by a horde of zombies and run out of clean rags? Oh, for fuck's sake. Y you get the damn point. Just, just plan ahead. Having plans in place to cover your basic survival vitals, a way to forage for food, extra water and cleaning tablets, proper medical supplies, etc. will enhance your quality of life, increase your lifespan, and save your butt in numerous situations. So do it! Supplemental Looting Concept Next up, here's a bit of a method slash concept that I've applied to my own looting techniques and, you know, I'm sure other people use, but I've coined this as Supplemental Looting. Essentially, what I will do is limit my looting for certain items based on their priority to me, and then loot them again as they are needed. To serve as an example, let's talk about bandages. Think about what situations you use bandages in. Zombie attacks, cuts from sliding down ladders without gloves, gunshot wounds, wolf and bear attacks, etc. In any of those situations, would you ever find yourself with over 12 bleeds and think you have some chance of living without bleeding out? Probably not. So, I limit myself to 2-3 to three full bandages in my inventory because I won't need more than that to survive in any one situation. The looting becomes supplemental as I end up patching up the occasional cut and as I find more full bandages to replace my used ones with. With this method, I always have what I need to patch up cuts and won't overcarry with a bag full of half-used garbage. This enables me to pack light and efficiently. Same goes for ammo. Do you really envision yourself using 120 rounds in one fight for your Mosin? No? So why hoard that much? Obviously, this varies based on the weapon, because if you have a full auto weapon, you're probably going to burn through more ammo, thus needing you to carry more. However, 
keep in mind the practicality of carrying the amount of ammo that you have, and remember you can always loot for more later if the need be. What I really love about this looting method is that it forces me to always go back and loot different places all throughout my player's life. I don't find myself bored and overgeared and end up camping Northwest Airfield tents for three hours. Instead, I always have an objective to go and address my bandit situation, my food and water levels, my ammo running low, and so on. Organization. PC players like myself can be found playing one of Daisy's most popular in-game minigames, Inventory Tetris. Being good at organizing your loot can be an art, but it also can be essential to your survival. Having organized loot in your inventory and keeping your organization tendencies consistent between each life allows you to always know where a specific item is when you need it most, if not hotboard. Especially in medical and PvP related items. Whether you're bleeding out and need bandages as soon as possible, or you're trying to flank to a new position to win a gunfight with an EpiPen, already knowing where these items are in your inventory will save you those precious seconds and maybe your life. I would also recommend storing items you don't need in crucial moments in your backpack. Food, a lighter, your water bottle, whatever you want can go in your bag and be dropped in a moment's notice to give you a big chunk of stamina to flank and fight during PvP. Stamina and Noise I've already discussed my playstyle of playing light, but a big part of my preference is because packing light saves me stamina to flank, hold my breath to line up a shot, or vault over walls when I need to escape an area. And it keeps my character quiet while moving around. A big part of the way that I loot is that I want to preserve as much stamina and be as quiet as possible, while still gearing up with the right survival equipment to help me out in the long run. For this to happen, it means that you have to make sacrifices, and can't always get the best possible item or take everything that you want. For example, the plate carriers deem the absolute best form of ballistic protection for your chest in the game. So, why not put that on every time I find one? Well, a plate carrier weighs a whopping 12 kilograms with no attachments. Meaning that if you already have a gun or two and most of the survival equipment that you would need, which if you're finding plate carriers you probably do, it's probably going to take away half of your stamina bar. On the other hand, the pressed and the stab vests offer most of the same ballistic protection with about half the weight, making it way more stamina friendly, not to mention it matches my personal fashion aesthetic. Same goes for ammo. Let's say you have 50 308 rounds versus 20 762 by 54 rounds, and you end up fighting a decked out Mosin and already have a nice CQC weapon. Do you hold on to the 308 rounds just in case you find something better, even though all that extra ammo will just sit in your inventory space doing nothing, weighing you down? Well, I guess that's just a choice that you have to make, but personally, I take the Mosin and drop the 308, purely because I favor carrying as little as possible and being able to defend myself at range. Or you can always just drop some of it and save it for later, blah blah blah, but my point is, you have to make decisions and sometimes you have to make a sacrifice to be efficient and play the way that you want to play. In the end, I hope you found all this information, you know, at least interesting, if not useful. If you learned something, or at the very least you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up to the video to support the channel. Also make sure to comment with any of your own loot management tips and strategies. That's it for now, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.